Let's turn our Bibles to John 12, 12 to 19. Uh, the next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. Uh, and Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it just as it is written. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. Uh, the reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. This is what is most important. Praising God, but we hold on to the Word of God. We pray, we hold on to the Word of God. Uh, we go to worship, holding on to the uh, correct covenant. You go to school, go back to school, study, holding on to the covenant of God. If you're going back to the work, holding on to the covenant of God. If you're going into the family, holding on to the covenant of God. Um, I really pray, even when you're falling asleep today, and when you wake up for a second, holding on to the Word of God and go back to sleep. Okay? Then it's fine. If you're yawning, holding on to the covenant of God. If you're taking number two, did anyone take number two today? At church? Holding on to the covenant of God. Don't simply hold on to your phone. Holding on to the covenant of God. That is what's most important. human brain is very vulnerable. Um, it's really vulnerable to damage. Uh, Harvard Health, uh, harvardhealth.com, I think it's by Harvard University, um, they uh, gave, uh, wrote, a, wrote an article that affects your brain the most, the worst habit that affects your brain first. sitting too much um, your brain is so vulnerable it's affected only simply when you're sitting too much All right what, what's wrong with sitting too much but your brain is damaged by it because when you're sitting too much are you simply sitting too much or what are what do you have in your hands or what are you working on that affect your brain so many people who are damaged brain they do sit a lot and sitting too much. And another, there are four factors that affect your brain by Harvard. Second is lack of socializing. Uh, so, lack of socializing. Oh, wait. Sorry. Lack of socializing. Um, simply talking to people online while you're playing game is not socializing. Uh, my son's playing uh, Switch. I, I let him play Fortnite. Fortnite was free to download on Switch. He downloaded it, he played, and this random kid started to talk to Covenant. And of course, he didn't have anything to talk, talk back, but I believe he started to hear something wrong. That's not socializing. Socializing is, is something that you can talk deep inside of you, which can be only possible in the gospel. So socializing is, is not simply going out and hanging out with friends. I went golfing with my friend. That's not socializing. It's simply you're sharing your time with your friends. Socializing should bring you healing. But nowadays, our socializing is very uh, superficial. And it's very, um, in a sense, it's just, it's just cover of your book. You're just like, talking to people 
And it looks like you're communicating, but you guys are all blocked to each other. Privacy is important that affects your brain. So look at people who's going through mental problems. They are alone all the time. They don't talk to anybody. Even when they talk, they are only the one talking to someone. No one's listening to them. Right? Lack of socializing. That affects your brain. What else affects your brain? I think this is one of the big problems for many uh, MZ generation. Inadequate, uh, in, uh, inadequate sleep. All right. Anyone lacking of your sleep? Does it, is it really, are you really lacking because you're doing homework? Or was it that you weren't able to control, manage your time schedule? That you have to work on things at night. That's over, over, over all night. Right? You're so busy doing something else during the day that you were, you're simply busy at night because you haven't done anything until night. And then you go to sleep, you wake up having an inadequate sleep. And then when people ask, why, are you, why you look so tired? Then you're simply saying, oh, I was working on my homework all night yesterday. Well, what did you do during the daytime? Right? We are not, we, we have actually lost our, our, um, our ability even to manage my schedule. So many are suffering from inadequate sleep because of work, because of sleep, because of your, because of your social life, your culture. You are, um, you're, you are sacrificing your sleep for your entertainment, which actually affects your brain as well. Fourth, chronic stress. Um, this means, this also means, I believe, I didn't read it from the article, but when it says chronic stress, it is that you have lost ability to manage your stress. It is not that there, there cannot, you cannot be stress-free. Do you guys understand? Anything from anyone around you will affect you with stress. It will affect you. But we have lost ability to manage the stress. So how do we react to our stress? Simply getting very frustrating or very angry. Or sometimes you just start to cry. A random reason. All of a sudden tears coming out your, your eyes. Like these are, these are the way you manage your stress, yet we don't know how to manage it. So it became chronic. You're living with burdens and heavy labor on your shoulder every single day. With your thoughts are very heavy laden. Your thoughts are very hardened. And it became, it became a rock on your shoulder. that You don't even know why your body posture is always like this. Right? You're always stressed. Like you're laughing when you're with friends, but you're stressed. You're doing something, but you're still stressed. Do you, have you ever experienced this? I have finals. I have final tomorrow. And then have you ever been to karaoke or hanging out with friends before taking finals? And what does it feel like hanging out with friends after taking finals? Hanging out with friends before taking finals. Hang out with friends after taking finals. What brings you real joy? Yeah, like after finals, you're like, I'm free. Right? But before taking finals, when, even when you're drinking, even when you're playing game, you're, alre you're, you're already stressed. Oh, I got to study. I got to study. Oh, I have exam tomorrow. I have We're living that way. We're living like that always. Oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to figure out this. How am I going to manage this? How am I going to talk to this person? How am I going to manage, resolve this issue? We're living like that with homework every day in our brain and our hearts. And it's never been resolved when Jesus said it's finished. But if it's, it's actually after finals. You just finished it all and you got A, you graduated. And you're hanging out with friends. Isn't there much joy? After finishing your homework. Jesus says it is finished. But we are living in this tremendous stress. Which is chronic forever. I know we, we, we in order to resolve these issues. 
we plant things. Yeah, today Pastor Shin talked about, aren't you planting things in vain? Therefore, you're gaining nothing. With this damaged brain, we are planning things in vain. And even after achieving all, the result is I am gaining nothing. It's not that I planned it wrong. It is that no matter what you plan, the result is in vanity. You are gaining nothing. And how are we able to plan things well if our brain is already damaged? Now in the Bible says, 1 Peter chapter 5, 7-8, to eight, Satan is like a ro rolling lion. He's coming after you. Who's in worried? Who's in who's anxious? He's coming after to devour you. That's what Satan does. All right, Satan has devoured you, and then now after being devoured, uh, eaten by Satan, we are planning things for God, and that usually goes against God. And this has been the norm of our life. This has become our lifestyle. This is a norm for many Christians. And this is norm for this age. We are living with all this type of culture. And we are affected by it. All right, now, what is the things we can do before we now, before we planning to do things better, let's proclaim our faith. To work of Satan first. That's what we enjoy. When you're, these things happen when you're alone. Satan deceives you when you're alone, right? I know all of you guys are very close to each other. I haven't seen anyone watching porn together. When do you watch porn, Michael? Are you watching with Daniel? No, right? He's doing something alone. When you're doing something wrong, do you do it with friends? or do, I know some people do it together. But you're doing it alone. That's when Satan deceives. But when you're alone, can we proclaim my faith? To my wrong lifestyle, to my wrong thoughts, to my wrong emotions, to my wrong stress and burdens, can we proclaim? Instead of before putting it down, can we proclaim first to destroy work of the devil? So when we say God is with me, that's a proclamation of this. We are... In God's sovereignty. God is with me means I am in God's sovereignty. Although my life looks like this, that my brain is damaged. But another great thing has been scientifically proved. Your brain could be developed and could be recovered even when you're aged. All the parts of your body getting aged and getting old. But your brain can be recovered even when you're getting old. And your brain can be refreshed with the power of the Holy Spirit. So proclaim to your life while studying the things of the world. They are proclaiming to you, you're done, man. Look at your lifestyle. Your brain is already damaged. You're hopeless. But what the Bible says is you are in God's sovereignty. Even when my brain is damaged, God is with me. That's it. Amen. Amen. And let's proclaim God's method to our lifestyle. What is God's method? It is say the God's method is only one. What is it? Jesus Christ. Proclaim Christ to your life. 
Proclaim Christ to your stress. Proclaim Christ to your loneliness. Proclaim Christ to your heavy burden. Proclaim Christ to your stress. Have you ever done that? Let's proclaim Christ to our life. Lord, my life is very broken. But I confess Jesus is the Christ. That's the method God has given us. To my life, proclaim this as well. All I need is Holy Spirit. That is God's power. Lord, I need your power from above. I need your power that transcends time and space. I need your power that saved 237, 5,000 people group. I need your power to dictate my life. I need your power to recover and restore. I need your power to recreate my life. I need your life. You know what is blessing? Blessing is that we realize the necessity of Christ in our difficulties. That is blessing. Do not misunderstand blessing as resolving the issue. Blessing is that I realize I need Christ in every aspect of our life. Even sometimes I go to Tarapang, I ask this person even um, a few days ago, I ask him, Hey, uh, what does it mean for you to live for God? He says, oh, living for God is abandoning sin. All right, what do you mean abandoning sin? He says, abandoning my idol. Okay, I told him, take away all your games right now. Trash it. Can you do that? He says, I cannot. And I ask him, aren't you a hypocrite then? Aren't you a liar? And he says, no, I don't want to claim that I'm a liar. Then I say, throw away all your social media. Throw away all your games. Throw away everything that you, you value more than God. Throw that away. Can you do that right now? He says, I cannot. And I asked him, you know what you realize? To overcome your idol worship, you need Christ. So if you realize, if you can realize you need the power of God, you need Christ. If you realize you are desperate for Christ, that is what we call the blessing. Near God is a blessing of God. And in order to near God, to avoid the wrath of God, is only through Christ. Remnants, have you ever realized that you need Christ in your life? Not because, it's not by learning, not by being taught. At the church, you need Christ. But have you ever thought in your heart, Deeply in your heart that you are such a trash that there's nothing you can do. But all I need is Christ alone. If you realize that, remnants, you are very blessed. Proclaim to your life. I know sometimes we act hypocrite. Right? Let me expose Dick and James. <laughs> there was a time Pastor Shin went to Korea. So during that time, I had to lead all the early morning service. Deacon James came. Pastor Yon, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you during early morning service. He never showed up early morning service. So is he lying to me? Or does he need power of the Holy Spirit? Remnants, it is not. He, wanted, he didn't simply say, I'm going to help you, Pastor Yon. That he didn't show up early morning service. We do give this kind of confession of faith many times. But do we leave out our faith? We can. We don't. So sometimes people might say, Paul is hypocrite. Nathan, last week we talked about Nathan, you'll come to church every week. And Nathan says, yes. There's only one person who takes it really seriously, Deacon Cuss. He came to Nathan's dead. Oh, Pastor Johan says, your son's going to come to church every week. And Deacon, Deacon uh, Elder, you was like, for real? <laughs> we need power of the Holy Spirit remnants. We're not denying my faith is life. But we accept my life is weak to live out my faith. But you know what we should not give up? We should not give up proclaiming Christ to our lives. You know who needs Christ? Confess, repeat after me. I need Christ the most. And as I told you guys, <laughs> to some boys today, our internet service can track you what website you visited. If, if you're using church Wi-Fi, you are exposed to the manager of our, our internet website. And it's been found. 
some of you are joining or spending much time on an inappropriate website when we're together here. Do you know what you need? We're not saying that's wrong. Why not if you need it? If you're going to write down on the comment, Jesus is a Christ, go ahead. You know what you need? We need power of the Holy Spirit. Can we accept that? I cannot transform my life on my own. Even when I decided I'm going to live for Christ, give all to Christ, without the assistance assistant of the Holy Spirit, we cannot. How many times did you resolve, I'm going to do this for Christ. I'm going to do this for God. Do you know what we need? We need the power of the Holy Spirit. Trying in God. So may you confess to your life, Jesus is the Christ. That you need the power of the Holy Spirit. And proclaim to your life as well. Because Many education, written documents, your textbook, try to dictate your thoughts and mind. But may you claim, proclaim God's word holds absolute authority above any other written textbooks. Word of God has authority over TikTok. Amen. Over Snapchat. Amen. I believe many MZ generations believe in TikTok fake news, Snap fake news, YouTube fake news. We, you don't need to be deceived or, or swindled by all these news because the word has utmost authority on top of any other written opinions or arguments. Word is above all. Amen. So proclaim word of God to your lifestyle when you're alone. You may really realize you are the temple of God. Even when things are going wrong, you're doing something incorrect. You are still the temple of God. God indwells in you. He guides you, works in you, to you, for you. You are the temple. So bless your lifestyle. Bless yourself. I am the temple of God. Even when you're swayed away, you are the temple of God. Amen. These are the ten foundations of our faith. I am the temple of God. And remember, God's mission field. I didn't write this down on our uh, middle, high, and college retreat schedule. But it, although it's unwritten on the documents, it is planned to do the evangelism camp with you guys. Wherever you go, it is evangelism camp. Bus use, we're going to go on Tuesday. It is evangelism. You're not going there to fish, fishing or catch fish. You're going there to catch people. He says there might be possibility 50% of raining. We will go. Because we're not going there simply catch fish. Catch human beings. Right? You are a fisher of human being. Do not forget. Wherever I go, it's evangelism camp. Wherever you are, God guides you there to save them. Again, don't let anyone claim you as their servant. Because you're not employed by the power authority of your, their manager. You are sent by God. It's simply because they do not know that they act like they have ownership on you. Yet, you got to know your owner, owner of your life is only God who sent you. Uh, one of the remnant decided, uh, I heard one of the remnant wanted to work at McDonald's. One hour, $18? Go ahead. But you got to realize this. Whether you work at McDonald's or whether you work at some, whether you do tutor or whether you work cafe, you got to know God sent me to save them. Amen. 
we are an evangelist and it is God's reign blessing and honor death and curses and surge and all beauty are belong to God and he grants you amen sometimes we believe the blessing of the money is coming from my boss no the source of money is God does any textbook teach you that no because they forgot the master of who the master of money is but the master of money is God blessing and honor and glory and all that belong to God and may you believe God will reign in your life that it is God who's guiding and governs my life may you proclaim to your life it is my it is not my wrong habit that controls me it is God who reign in me so isn't there a song Lord reign in me reign in your power over all my dreams in my darkness are you are the Lord of all I am and then so won't you reign me again amen God reigns in you and God's providence you have one life that you not have second chance you'll not have third chance you have one life that one life God will take care he provides and he guides all he has providence for your life do not rely on your skill or salary rely on God who can provide you all amen all that hope that you have will become hopeless but God who is hope of your life will stay everlasting our hope is in God alone he provides and he guides our one life and to live and God's judgment remnant do not stand before any others because at the end of the time, it will be God who will judge. And when God sees you, do you know who you are before God? You are righteous by the blood of Jesus Christ. By the seal of the Holy Spirit, you are guaranteed to go to heaven. So stand before God alone. He is our judge. So do not be scared. Do not be afraid. Because God is my judge he's always on your side amen even when you're doing in romans this is what it says if god is for us who is against us if god is for us who spared his son for our life who can go against us god is on your side amen so our question is this am i on God's side as well remnants now we're in the age we protect the genuine gospel real gospel that Jesus is a Christ will be proclaimed to the generation and generation through you guys sometimes I am lacking sometimes I'm weak but do not worry God chose you to do his decree through you, he will proclaim Jesus is the Christ. God is your judge. So do not be scared. Amen. God's reward. A cup, even a cup of water for an evangelist will not lose its volume. Remnants, your life itself is for the evangelist, for the glory of God. What you eat is for the glory of God. What you play is for the glory of God. Even the mistakes is for the glory of God. Even the incorrect thoughts 
will, God will correct it and edit it for the glory of God. Everything will become platform. Not even a single thing with, will be wasted because God will collect every single thing for you to draw near to God. Amen? And use it for the word evangelization. Not even a single thing will be lost. God's reward. 237 will come to you. 5,000 people group will come to you. And the courtyard for Gentile and prayer and children will be actualized through your life. And the main figure of Friday, Saturday, Sunday will be fulfilled and will be left behind as eternal legacy through you. That is God's absolute plan no matter what. So today, Pastor Shin gave us a message. When they met Jesus, they claimed Hosanna. What does Hosanna mean? Save me. Save us. Now, proclaim Christ. You may bless, you may be blessed throughout this week, and may God's word be fulfilled to you that throughout this week you may experience Hosanna in your thought. Pastor Shin says it's motivation. Lord, save me from my motivation. Pray that experience Hosanna in your emotion. Many times it is my emotion dictates my act and behavior, but Lord, save me from my emotion. Proclaim Hosanna to your plan. Lord, save me from my plan. What is the reason we cannot abandon our plan? It's because we are scared. If it doesn't go my way, my life will be damaged. Remnants, it's been God's guidance up until this time. What make you believe it has been your plan that make you where you stand? It's been God's guidance, remnants. So pray to God, Lord, Hosanna, that you abandon my plan, Lord. Only when you abandon, you may be open to God's plan. And may God show you his plan so that you are able to abandon and disregard just like uh, Michael prayed today. Disregard your thought. Hosanna, Lord, save me from my plan. And Lord, Hosanna to my habit. Things are happening to you habitually, which is a spiritual problem. Yet it became your life, it becomes your life that sometimes we don't even realize this is a problem to us. Hosanna to my habit. Then may God set me free from my wrong habit. And may God let me, bless me to realize things that need to be transformed and recreated. What you do, proclaim your faith according to the word of God. He will open your eyes. He will guide you. He will work in your thoughts and your mind. He will give you the thought to overcome and transcend. He will do that. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Let him work in you. Hosanna to your idol. What are the idols we cannot disregard? We cannot abandon. What are the idols that have captivated my thoughts and my mind? What are the idols? Even right now, I can I can stop thinking about it. Proclaim Hosanna. Salvation means destruction to the work of the devil. Only when Satan is destroyed, he's the one captivating your thoughts and mind will be destroyed. Only when Jesus Christ proclaimed the sin that separates you from God will be resolved. Only when you proclaim Christ, hell that has been power over your life will be destroyed. Hosanna right now, right here. Remnants, don't let anything swallow you. 
with its own ideology or, or its own thoughts. Do not build Tower of Babel because you're scared to be scattered. That's the, that was the reason why they built the Tower of Babel. But proclaim Hosanna. Leave the Babel behind. Follow God's word. He has provided, he has already prepared everything for word evangelization. Amen. Practice is not something I do with my hands. Practice, proclaim faith to our lives. So let us apply apply the word of God to our lives. Application of the word starts with something people disregard the most. People in the world, many elites and celebrities they do celebrate this type of behavior, yet Christians have lost the mystery of prayer, which is meditation. Application of the word starts with meditation of the covenant. If we can meditate, and there's one thing we can do, as we meditate, we can pray with it. When you're alone, when you're lonely, can we meditate on the word? Can we pray? I know Satan tried to set you up to destroy you when you're alone. But now you bring in Christ when you're alone, Satan will run away. Satan will laugh at you until you proclaim Christ. Let him run away. Let him flee as you bring in Christ into your life. Meditation of the word with a prayer. Let CVDIP takes place. Meditate on the word until you see what God desires from you. Meditate on the word until you possess what God desires you to possess today. Meditate on the word until you enjoy what God has given to you. Meditate on the word until you see how it become practice in you. Meditate on the word how it become it leaves behind the masterpiece for the next generation. Meditate on the word. Remnants, it's been. Have you ever thought why God has left you a written document? Have you ever thought on this? He could have made a movie. He could have made a voice recording. But he wrote it on a paper and left it to you. For what? Meditate. Open it. Meditate. And if we can meditate on purpose message, especially when you're alone, you will never lose. Because Christ has always rightfully triumphed. He will rightfully, inevitably triumph again. He will absolutely triumph again. The mystery of Christ, he has never lost. It's rightful Christ has won. It is inevitable that Christ has won. It is absolute that Christ will win again. The mystery of Christ, he has never lost. So today when we read the Bible, it says, all you do, earn nothing. It's gaining nothing. Do you see the world has gone after him? They try their best to mock Christianity, but you will see they all the world will follow after him. Go after Jesus Christ. Christ is above every other name. Our God is above ever, every other God. Christ will destroy the work of the devil. That Christ will believe. That Christ will proclaim. That Christ will meditate. That Christ will leave it behind. This Christ, let him be 24. When you're sitting down in your home, when you're walking down the street, and then, does anyone know the lyrics? Lying in your bed, 
put it in your wrist, foreheads. Keep God's word in your heart. Right? 24. Make it 24. God will work 25. The kingdom of God will reign in your life. Govern your thoughts and mind. And it will be the eternal legacy, eternal inheritance, eternal masterpiece. Sometimes and sometimes when we listen to the message, we don't even know what it is, what it, what it means, right? Sometimes when we listen to we listen it in vain. We're like, doesn't matter. Let us start meditating. All right? If you can't even grab hold of the concept of what it means, concept of the message, it's okay. Do not, do not torture yourself of lack of your understanding. Start meditating on the message. If you can understand, ask a question, what it means 24? What does that mean? When you're having forum, ask your teacher. What does it mean 25? Explain me what it means eternity. What did you experience? Talk to each other. What did you experience when you meditate on the word of God? I knew, I know you have this type of problem before. What changes you? How do you meditate? Share the way of meditation of the word. Share the way of how you pray. Share how God works in you and how God has worked in you and how you expect God will work in you. That's forum. That's socializing. Remnants, do not be discouraged. We have word of God that will never disappear. Things that we can meditate 24. We are given this blessing to meditate 24. Into the power of the throne. The power of the throne through WRC, which we will listen to throughout the retreat. Pastor Liu says in the first message, he will give us living power to live out our life. That overcomes crisis. That overcomes problems. That overcomes my limitations. He will give us living power. Not only live out my life, but also to save everybody. As we don't need the power of the Spirit to survive. No, we don't survive to make my life prosper. We survive to save everyone. He will give us power of the throne. And receive this power of the throne, especially in the morning. In the morning, may God bless you with His living word 24 as soon as we wake up, may God bless you in the morning. During the daytime. This is when you get most scarred. This is when you get most confused. This is when you get most motivated as well. But may God guide you during the daytime. I know there are things to be done. But may God bless you with his word of God. And at night. Go into the blessing of the throne at night. Uh, walk of faith has been very individualistic. And it needs to be very individualistic as well. In a sense, walk of faith should be personalized to every single of you. I know we can pray together, but can we have power to pray when I'm alone? I know I can meditate if somebody tells me to meditate, but can I meditate when I'm alone? Even when people are doing nothing and they look down on me when I'm meditating on the Word, can I still meditate on the Word when I'm alone? I know I can play a game. I know I can do something else. But can I make a choice to meditate on the Word of God? May God strengthen me to meditate 
on the Word of God. Even when I'm on vacation, can I meditate on the Word of God? Even when I'm at work, can I meditate on the Word of God? Even when I'm busy, can I meditate on the Word of God? Even at night, I could have watched a movie. But even while you're, you're watching a movie, can I still pray while watching a movie? You know, we're going to watch Minions, right? Can we pray as we watch Minions? Right? Do not restrict God work on you only on certain time. Let him work on you 24-7. He is able. Amen. He's able to work on you 24-7. Let us have time of meditation and let us have time of prayer and praise. stand up and let's close our eyes about a minute let's think about the message we heard
to open my eyes to, to see your plans for me. Judge of our life. 
Let's pray. Now the grace of Jesus Christ and love of love of our Father God, and working in dwelling guidance and communion of the Holy Spirit, be upon all the remnants who will meditate, who will experience CVDIP, who will experience your power 24-7 throughout the retreat. Be upon them now and forever. Amen. <clears throat>